Ward 81, it's a video from the Fuzz Tones. Right now on Video Wave, we're here with Michael J. and Rudy from the Fuzz Tones, the second, court, the second duo of people from the Fuzz Tones that we're with tonight. That was filmed at Pilgrim Street, which, which I know at one time was the largest mental hospital in the world. Yeah, we had a private party kind of thing out there. Is it still any longer a mental hospital? Or? No, they closed it all up. It's just, you know, like an old shell. Whose idea is it to go out there to make a video? That was my brother's. He's the director of our video. His name is Andrew Christensen, and he's open to doing videos for other bands also. All right. Um, did you have to sneak in, or do you apply to the state for permission to use a place like no, that? No, we applied to the state. And they gave it to you? Mm hmm Boy. They didn't see us. They didn't see you? No. <laughs> did they say that other people had used, had used that place to film? Did they make movies there or something? Not since it was closed. Hmm. Now, the... Uh, Fuzz Tones have been together as the Fuzz Tones for four years? Yes. And you sort of, the Fuzz Tones themselves actually sort of pre predate the psychedelic revival scene in New York, right? We were the first ones, right. if that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I guess you could say that, because when the Fuzz Tones started, we didn't even know that there were other bands that were doing this kind of thing in other parts of the country. And as we were getting the concept of the band together, we started to hear about other bands like Chesterfield Kings up in Rochester and the Unclaimed out in Los Angeles. And um, I guess it was just something that, that hit everybody all at the same time. It was just a natural progression of music. You know, you had the 50s revival that came up in the early 70s. And I guess everything 10 years hence goes back 20. Now, you've been involved in the New York scene in other forms and doing other things for a while before the Fuzz Tones happened. And did you find, have you found it easier since you, say, became the Fuzz Tones? A lot. I think, if anything, the Fuzz Tones made it easier for a lot of the other bands to be doing this kind of thing right now. So we established this style of music in the clubs and um, as a, a format to be reckoned with. Because um, initially, when the Fuzz Tones were starting to get gigs, we had a, a lot of trouble. They wouldn't even give us you know, like an opening show at CBGB's on a Tuesday night, you know, but um, now it's been a lot easier for all the other bands that have just started up and playing in the dive. It took a long time. Uh, we were playing about two years before we were taken seriously at all, and then all of a sudden things started to go pretty smoothly, but it took two years of very hard work and playing in the smallest, uh, crummiest dumps in the city before we got there. Now you say taken seriously, and that's something that surfaced before when we were talking to Deb and Ira. Is it strange to use the words say taken seriously in the context of something like the Fuzz Tones? Certainly. I, mean, I, I don't You want understand. your music to be taken seriously, and you work seriously as musicians. It's as serious as rock and roll will ever be. Uh, if you think rock and roll is serious, then we're about as serious as you can get. The problem is, is that most people's concept of rock and roll is the top ten they see on MTV. And there's very few bands that are out on major labels today and that are really out in the public eye that you could consider rock and roll bands. The only real rock and roll bands you have now are the garage bands and the bands that are doing things on independent labels. And they're not, you know, they're not getting radio airplay and they're not getting MTV airplay. And so what's the aspiration of the Fuzz Tones? Well, it's, it's almost like we are doing our own thing but within the parameters of what the music industry says. Um, per se, we go out and make a video, you know, which, which does suit the fuzz tones, but it also suits the music industry and what the music industry expects of us to play the game with them. Right. And you're pretty optimistic about being reasonably successful playing the game within well, your own limits? I don't think that this band has any chance whatsoever of being as big as Boy George or anything. But I think that the band could, could easily make it uh, successful enough to make a living and that's all I really care about is to be able to play music for a living and, the fact and, and something that we enjoy which is this form of music. And the fact that the Fuzz Tones are pretty well recognized as being sort of uh, near the top if not on top of the scene here, the psychedelic scene here. Well we hope. Yeah and since the psychedelic scene is one of the major things going on in the city you know, conversely, you can say that you're on top of the scene in New York. So well, it's interesting, we went out on our tour when we only had the um, Ward 81 off the RebelCon compilation, and uh, some places we played, we had 10 people. Other places we played, we had, you know, four or 500 people. So it really, really depends. So the rest of the country is pretty hungry for that sort of psychedelic they thing as well? They certainly are. All right, well, good luck with it, and we'll, uh, there's, you said there's a mini LP coming pretty soon? Mini LP yeah. should be out by the time this is on. Okay, great. This was Michael J. and Rudy from the Fuzz Tones. I'm Tim Selmer for Video Wave. Bye-bye.